Well, hello, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up, My Legion Adventure, Episode 38, and we will be covering Adventure Comics 320 and the second appearance of Dev M. Dev M is a yet another survivor of Krypton, and we're going to talk about his first two appearances, which are in Adventure Comics 287 and 288. Um... When the book, the main feature of the book was the Bizarro Tales, and Superboy was the backup. Uh, so we're, but it's kind of flip flopped in that. So I'm going to pause for a second, get set up, and give you some information on those first two issues, and then we're going to jump in and talk Adventure Comic for th- th- two, <laughs> three twenty. Wow, dummy Ross, that was hard. So episode, uh, episode issue two eighty seven of Adventure Comics was. Cover dated August 1961. It had a wonderful Kurt Swan Stan K cover with Dev M floating in space and using his telescopic vision to see Superboy getting a trophy. Um, it was called The War of the Superboys. Uh, the writer was Jerry Siegel, penciler, inker, George Papp, editor, Mort Weisinger. And here is the synopsis for it. On Krypton, before its destruction, juvenile delinquent Dev M plays many destructive pranks, and his gang gets in trouble repeatedly for bedeviling his next door neighbor Jorel and his family. But Dev heeds Jorel's prophecy of destruction for Krypton, outfits an alien shelter to take himself and his family to safety while placing them all in suspended animation, and allows them to survive while drifting in space. Years later, in Superboy's time, the alien shelter lands on Earth, and Dev M is jolted out of suspended animation. He discovers Superboy's existence and learns that the Boy of Steel is really Kal-El, son of Jor- Jor-El. Dev lures Superboy into a trap and projects him into the Phantom Zone uh, from Earth. Um, okay, I read it. It's a really... it's. It's standard one of these comics. It's enjoyable. The first part's very enjoyable. It's gorgeous George Papp art. Uh, it's a little silly. Um, um, it shows that in the futuristic setting of Krypton that the L family and the M family live in a suburban cul-de-sac, which is kind of cute. Uh, but it was fun. So uh, let us move on to Adventure Comics 288. I'm not going to go too detail these two. I just want you to get the backstory. Uh, this one was public, cover dated September 1961. Uh, the title of the story was The Knave of Krypton. Um, same creative team, same cover art team. Uh, but the cover on this one is about the Bizarro story in the back. Um, and here's a synopsis from that. Masquerading as Superboy, Dev M blackens his rival's reputation with his parents and the people of Smallville. Then he releases Superboy from the Vanum Zone and takes himself and the space capsule bearing his parents into the future. Superboy finds that only the Kents believe his story of Dev M's impersonation, and he is ordered by the mayor of Smallville to leave Earth. But Chief Parker believes Superboy and concocts a ruse that implies that Superboy was the victim of red kryptonite when he committed the acts of vandalism. The townspeople change their mind and Superboy is allowed to stay. Again, another quaint story with a weird ending. Okay, Chief Parker, you're a nice guy. Give him the benefit of the doubt. But that was, you know, that would have been... I don't... I think at this time they were doing these page... This, what was the page count on this? Let me just double check. It doesn't really tell me. But, I mean, it was eight or nine. I don't have it. I had to read it online on a... On a I just had to read it online, and it was uh, a, not the best copy. So it was neat. These were funny. Dev M was just a bad guy, and it ends that he's still just a bad guy, and he got away. But now we're going to do uh, the issue that we were meant to do, and that is Adventure Comics 320, um, his first appearance in the Legion. And there's some stuff in this I did not really realize, because I know him from... I first remember seeing him in... Uh, I think it would have been Dark Crisis. Not Dark Crisis, good goodness. I was just at the comic shop, bought some day. Dark, Dark Crisis comics. Um, the Great Darkness Saga, um, because I think he shows up in that. Um, but let me give you the synopsis for this one. Okay, Adventure Comics 320, cover date May 1964. Cover credits Kurt Swan, George Klein. Yay, Irish Shop lettered it. It is a great uh, comic book cover. It's 
Monel holding Dev M uh, while he's facing Superboy, and then Superboy's having a thought bubble, remind, remembering the time that Dev M threw him into the Phantom Zone. What a jerk. The name of the story is The Revenge of the Knave of Krypton. It's 17 pages. Part one is called, like it has in the past, the, they've done these. Part one is The Revenge of the Knave from Krypton, and part two is The Treachery of Moloch the Merciless. Uh, credits are Mort Weisinger, editor Plotter, uh, Plotter scripter Jerry Siegel, penciler John Forte, inkers Sheldon Marduff, and George Pat, pages four through nine only, and Al Placino, Superboy, and Clark Kent faces only. Letter Milton Snappin. Uh, the roll call is Saturn Girl, Brainiac 5, Sunboy, Monel, Lightning Lad, Chameleon Boys, Superboy, and Element Lad. Supporting cast is Dev M and Prody 2. Dev M is last seen in, uh, as I said, 288, but he's not seen again until Superboy. Uh, no, so it's not even Superboy in the Legion. Legion of Superheroes, second series, 294. That is a ways away. Um, that is ways away. That is. Just that's cool though. I mean that's that he came back and he was back a bunch. He he popped up more often. Um, and let me give you the synopsis from this one. Superboy leaves Smallville for the Legion's time era and arrives in time to see an applicant, Radiation Roy, fail his tryout. When the Legionnaires enter the clubhouse, a detection device indicates an intruder in the building. Superboy and Monel capture him, and he turns out to be Dev M, the incorrigible Kryptonian you Superboy battled in his own time. He relates Dev M's misdeeds, and the other Legionnaires are ready to turn him over to the Interstellar Counterintelligence Corp for punishment. But Dev M laughs and tells them that he is now reformed and is working for that organization. His current task is to capture the sinister Morlock the Merciless, head of the Cosmic Spy League. He has become close with the villain's underlings and has tried to steal Legion security secrets without actually revealing them to the to ingratiate himself with the leader. The ISCIC commander now asks the more experienced Superboy to take over the mission, and he agrees. After disguising himself as Dev M, Superboy takes some fake Legionnaire security gadgets with him and travels to Moloch's headquarters. Beam teleports him to the Master Spy. Moloch demands to know how Dev M made out with the Legion, and in response, Superboy demonstrates the fake gadgets. Moloch then opens a lead box that he thinks contains gold kryptonite, intending to erase his spy's powers. When he orders his men to fire at Dev M and kill him, however, the disguise is blasted away and reveals Superboy, who then takes them all into custody. Back with the Legion, Superboy learns that the real Dev M had known of the gold kryptonite and had Pretty Two secretly tag along with him and transform himself into fake gold kryptonite and replace the real thing. Prody then telepathically communicated with Superboy and told him of the scheme. Before Superboy leaves for home, he and Monel ask Dev M to join the Legion of Superheroes, but he refuses, telling them his heart is with the ISCIC. I really like this comic. I have never read this one. I know for a fact that I've never read it. I didn't remember any of it. I never, and I knew that when I read, you know, later Legion 294, that I had never read Dev M's origin. And he had a girlfriend, um, Shrinking Violet. And that all plays into the chameleon girl took the place of Shrinking Violet uh, preceding the Great Darkness Saga. So that's when I heard of him coming. Um, I think the art's wonderful. It's weird about the anchors, certain anchors doing faces, but it's not uncommon in these days. Um, I don't think it's the best Joe Forte. It's a little... Um, there's some odd panels. It was neat to say Radiation Roy because he pops up in the Levitt's gif in the era because they like to bring back some of those weird tryout people. And you find out Prody mimics he, uh, Sunboy. They have robots. So that leads to the decor, um, you know, the disguise aspect of the story later. And you get a good recap. Two, three, four, five. It's like almost six pages of the first chapter is flashback uh, of the story. But it's cool. And then uh, the head of the spy agency. And um, Dev M's got a little slightly different costume. It's purple with a green belt with a white buckle. I guess it's a buckle and a white cape. It's very 60s. Um, in the second part, um, you see them making all the fake gifts. So he's going to give Mo the Superboy's going to give Moloch. Um, and then they go to the Palace of Peace and Goodwill where they see the tranquilized globes. And then there's uh, a 
Hall of Heroes statues of Death Heroes. Um, uh, it, I love that Dev Amp tells Morlock, um, a, a, you know, what was happening is, well, I lifted them all up while they hung to a table. That's a bad thing. And if I, I can find an image, this image, that panel of uh, online, I will post it because I find it very silly. But Moloch, you know, he, he does his dirty dealing and gets a surprise when it's actually Superboy. And I think, it, you know, there's some really good, there's some really good silly Sixties Aliens design in here. Moloch looks a little like uh, a cross between Peter Lorre and Orson Welles. Uh, maybe Orson Welles with a black hair color on in, in a, in a black, really 60s haircut. But I don't know. It's a lot of fun. Um, I like that we Levitz and Giffen bring back a lot of these old characters that, you know, maybe one and dones. Um, Dev M is part of the, you know, this that weird spy agency. Uh, it's a simple story. Um, and I, I really went back to read the first issues, the two that I just brushed on is because i had you know this is me going i thought i was reading the very first dev m story when i read it and then i well, wait a minute and then i google it and i found it and i looked at the two issues um and i read them and i had fun it was nice to read all three of them because i got them back i mean i don't because i had read the adventure i had read six pages of flashback and then when i read it i went wow it was really close images everything it's really close um but he's a good character i like that the show he's redeemed in the future that things aren't static and bad guys who brahaha bad all the time. Um, you know, for 17 pages, not a lot happens. But then again, seven of that is uh, six or seven of that is flashback. But it's a fun superhero story. It's well worth a read. Devem's a good character. I liked him uh, in the Levitz Giffen era. I don't really kind of like what happens to him later. And I don't. Uh, uh, and when they do the reboot, he's uh, or once they do Valor instead of Monel being the you know post crisis inspiration, he's a Daxamite you know. And then there's when he battles Superman, he's got just weird haircut and he's a bad guy, and, and I don't like it. I like Dev M is just another you know superhero. In another you know there are super you get it's nice to know there are superheroes that aren't Legion members, but are interconnected with the Legion. So that's it. Um, Little, you know, this is going up on a Saturday, uh, five days late. I got my pneumonia vaccine. I'm at a certain age where they recommend you got it, so I do. And Tuesday at, after, I got it on Monday, I got it on Tuesday at the doctor, and by like four o'clock Tuesday afternoon, I felt like a bag of poop. And so I haven't, and I didn't record the rest of the week because I was like Wednesday, I, I went to work, but I had to leave a little early, and Thursday I was still tired from it. I really kicked my butt. Um, I've still got to get my COVID booster. I was going to get it this week, but it ain't happening. Um, so I'll probably get it uh, early November because my birthday is a week from yesterday, this past Friday. I just went to the comic shop today. I may do an episode a little later and post it tomorrow about the comics I bought. Um, and because tomorrow I'm going to be uh, avoiding Doctor Who on Twitter and stuff, I may rec- I'm going to pro- most definitely do a Defenders. Uh, my Defenders episode and post it tomorrow to get caught up. So Tuesday, we're back on track. Um, I want to thank all of you for listening. Um, I would love some input. Any, it'd be nice uh, to know if if I'm not te- if I'm not reviewing these enough or too much or I should change it, do multiple issues. Just please let me know. I have doubts and I'd like to hear some credit, uh, constructive criticism. Uh, but you can find me on Twitter at JSA4E, that is J-S-A, the number four, the letter E. Um, and also check out my Doctor Who podcast, uh, Gallifrey's Most Wanted. All right? Until then, be smart, be safe, be kind, and read some comics. <laughs>